Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be starting my series on streamer.bot. This is a bot that is fantastic. If you are streaming on any platform, really, um, you can use this to control OBS in crazy ways. It can replace very expensive equipment. Um, it's honestly the best bot. It's free. It's supported on Patreon. If you guys do end up liking and enjoying using StreamerBot, please consider supporting the creator on Patreon. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. So go support on Patreon if you feel so inclined and you can do that. That's a great way to make sure software like this always exists. Um, it's very powerful. It replaces things like a stream deck. And you can use hotkeys on your computer or, like in my case, I use a MIDI floorboard controller. Um, it's just a series of buttons, pedals that I can step on that emulate a keyboard press, which then trigger StreamerBot to control OBS and things on my computer, which is very cool. Um, and it's incredibly stable. So I have nothing but good things to say about StreamerBot. I'm going to go over in this video basic use and setup and just give you kind of a general overview of what streamer.bot is, how to use the interface. In future videos, I will be doing more in-depth tutorials on some crazy things you can set up using streamer.bot. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do, create a folder for streamer.bot. Please put this folder somewhere that won't get deleted. Don't make it in your downloads folder, preferably maybe in your documents folder. Um, a folder on your desktop can be risky, but you know, to each its own, just try to be organized so that you know where StreamerBot is so you can update it. This is not a program that manually will prompt you for updates, download the updates and all that stuff. You have to, just like we're going to install it, that's exactly how you're going to update it in the future as well. So I'll go over that with you. So the first thing you want to do is make a folder. So I've created a folder in this folder that I've made for this video. So where I'm going to put all the files for editing and put everything together. I've made a folder called StreamerBot. Then you're going to want to go to the website, which is streamer.bot. And you're going to see right away there's a download link for StreamerBot in the current version. Um, this is also where you can get access to the wiki, which is a great resource if you're confused about anything. And there's also the Discord, which can be very, very helpful for finding custom actions and sub actions, all kinds of crazy things you can do with this bot that other people have created. Go ahead and hit download on StreamerBot and that should download a zip file. And all you have to do is open that zip folder. If you don't have 7-zip or some other uh, compression program installed like WinZip, which I recommend you switch away from, but um, the Windows compression it, it'll be fine as long as you see this list of files. All you have to do is highlight them wherever you see them in whatever program that opened the zip file and drag them to the folder, drag and drop them into the folder that you created for StreamerBot. And that's it. When you update, all you have to do is the exact same process. Go to the website, download the newest version, open the zip file, highlight everything, drag it in and it will ask you do you want to replace the files in the destination replace this will not replace any of your custom settings or any of those kinds of files it will only replace the files that are included in the version of the update those are separate files you're never going to have your custom settings or files in the download only the files that run the program so go ahead and just update or download no problem just drag and drop Okay, so now that we've got StreamerBot downloaded, you're going to look for the EXE. Right here it says StreamerBot.EXE. You can see there's like a little icon for it. Right click on it, go to Properties, then go to Compatibility, and say Run this program as administrator. You're going to want to do this so that hotkeys and stuff that you set up between OBS, StreamerBot, all work because you're going to be wanting. You always run OBS as admin and always run programs that run hotkeys as admin if they're stable when running them as admin, if you, if you can. not Run as admin, hit apply or OK, hit OK to leave, and then go ahead and run streamer.bot.exe. Give it a second. It's going to create some files, and then you should see this window here pop up. If there's an update for streamer.bot, 
it will say in the top here that there's a new version. Please, please always keep your streamer bot updated. There's bug fixes. There's all kinds of things with compatibility versions between OBS and all of that. The other thing you're going to need to do, and I'll link this in the description as well. Anything you need will be linked in the description. You're going to want to install OBS WebSocket. Download OBS WebSocket, the current version. I'll link that in the description. Install. Make sure OBS is closed. Install OBS WebSocket, the plugin, and then in OBS, I'll show you here. Under Tools, when you launch it, you're going to see these WebSocket server settings. What you need to do is make sure the WebSocket server is enabled, and you're going to want to enable authentication, and you can use any password that you like. Any four digits is fine. doesn't really matter what it is for this instance, and for your instance, you can just put in something like 1234. This is all going to be behind your router, and it's not going to let people outside in the outside world access it. So... Type in a password that makes sense to you. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be eight digits. It can be ridiculous. As long as you know what it is, I'm going to use one, two, three, four for this video. We're going to hit OK. So the next thing we're going to do is look at StreamerBot. And you just want to kind of look at these tabs at the top. Just kind of see, get an idea of what's going on. We're going to look at each one. Actions. This is where we can set up things for StreamerBot to do that will interact directly with your OBS through the WebSocket plugin. Channel point rewards, this is where you can set up channel point redemptions, the Twitch kind, and you can connect this so that um, if you've already got a bunch of channel point rewards set up on your Twitch channel, they will show up here, and they will say that they're not owned. There's a tab here that says owned. That means that the streamer bot, you didn't set them up inside streamer bot, you set them up on Twitch. What I recommend that you do is that you highlight them all and you duplicate them. I'll save this for another video in the future, so look forward to that. Get subscribed if you want to see. But you want to create all new channel rewards through StreamerBot so that you can control all the functionality. If you make them in StreamerBot, they will get created on Twitch, but you'll also be able to edit them completely. All the aspects that you need to edit, um, other than the icons, can be done through StreamerBot which is great. You don't have to go into Twitch and dig around into the con creator control panel to try to figure out how to where they are and all that stuff. And um, you can just manage them all here under the channel point rewards tab. The next one is commands. This is where you would create channel commands, you know, like exclamation point commands or um, even just any kind of triggers that you want. Um, everything is going to be linked back to the Actions tab. So the Actions tab is what you'd want to have happen. You can set the Actions tab up to send messages to Twitch. Um, all, everything that you want StreamerBot to eventually do will then be linked to some sort of other section of StreamerBot. So a channel point reward would be linked to an action. A command will be linked to an action. Voice control will be linked to an action. Hotkeys will be linked to an action, etc. Oh, so on and so on and so on. So commands, this is pretty straightforward. You're going to make chat commands. These don't have to have an exclamation point. They don't have to be at the beginning of the sentence. You can make all kinds of crazy things happen and trigger through things that happen in the chat. That is basically what a command is. A command is a reaction to some kind of thing that's happening through your Twitch chat. Voice control. This is where you'd set up something to trigger based off of your speech. I don't have a lot of experience of, with this. We may do a video in the future exploring this together. Hotkeys, you can set up a global hotkey that you push on the keyboard. It has to include modifiers like Shift, Alt. Those hotkeys can then trigger actions as well, which is kind of nice. So you can set up things to change scenes, turn filters on and off, turn groups on and off. It's very, very cool. Twitch, this is where you would, once your Twitch account is connected and set up, you could set up polls, you could set up predictions, all the things that you'd want to do for Twitch, you can kind of just do them in StreamerBot, which is nice. Donor Drive, this is where you could set up extralife.org, stack up, and a different provider if they have the connections, uh, URLs, and different things like that to be able to connect this stuff to. So you can set up basically reward structures and different things that happen on your stream in relationship to a fundraiser. Server and client, this is for a local WebSocket so that you can run um, local files that get updated 
uh, with different information. One of the things that you can use this for is to create like a credit scene where the credits scroll up at the end of your stream, things like that. There's all kinds of possibilities with this we're not going to get into today. OBS. This is the tab where we will be connecting StreamerBot directly to OBS through the WebSocket stuff. We're going to do that in a bit. Slobs. This is a tab that um, you can use if you're using uh, Streamlabs OBS instead of OBS. If you're not, I'll show you how to turn this off so you never have to look at it again. If you're like me and don't want to use slobs. Settings is the rest of the tabs that you need to kind of figure out. So I, I think the dev kind of put a, some of the least set up access to use stuff in this you know section of uh streamer bot you have to go into the settings for instance if you want to get to this stuff in here but this user interface tab is where you can turn on and off things like streamlabs obs and now if i turn that off you can see that the tab that was here for streamlabs obs is gone so we could turn off the stuff we're not going to be focused on today at all we're not going to be looking at donor drive we're not going to look at server clients um, we're not going to look at voice commands and we're not going to look at channel point redemptions. All we're going to look at today are actions, commands, hotkeys, Twitch, and OBS. So I'm just going to leave those ones checked for this video. You can also turn off the tabs under the settings section here in the setting tab visibility. And uh, we're going to go over those quickly. And you can minimize the tray or you can confirm on close. I would just leave those at default. Next, we're going to hit general. And this is where you can set up queues. We'll talk about queues probably in a different video later. But basically, you can set up different kinds of actions to be hooked into different kinds of queues so that actions don't run into each other or they do run into, into each other. So if you wanted to have things happen simultaneously um, or if you wanted to have you know a queue system where it waits, where one thing triggers and then the next thing won't trigger in the queue until that first trigger is done running. You can also set up a specific sound card if you've got a sound card set up for a soundboard or a Go XLR that you want to route the audio to, let's say you've got sound commands or some kind of thing that's putting audio out in your actions, you can choose a sound card here. You can even change the volume and you can refresh the list so you can find all of your sound cards that you've got hooked up and set them up to go out. Twitch accounts, this is something we're going to come back to. This is going to be one of the first places that we're going to want to actually set things up in streamer bot but this is where you would connect your broadcaster account and your bot account and i'll show you guys how to do that if you're having trouble where it's not connecting you can always hit forget and then reconnect i'm going to give you a tip on how to hook this up properly so that you don't have to like do all this logging in and out of <laughs> your accounts streamlabs um, if you've got streamlabs hooked up and you want to trigger things, things that are happening from Streamlabs, you can hook up your Streamlabs account through the settings tab. You get a token, hook that up. You got stream elements, same thing. You can get a good token. You can hook up the account. And you can trigger things based on whether or not someone tips. Groups, this is where you can customize things for user groups. If you want to have a VIP group that is special, there's already groups that are pre-set up, like subscriber and mod and things like that. Um, this is where you can set up custom groups if you want to have your bots or different kinds of bots in a certain kind of group. If you want to have a, a secondary level of moderators that have higher abilities and command structures, you can link things to different groups. Um, we'll talk about that in a future video. Events. This is where you can trigger you know, custom alerts using OBS. Let's say you wanted to not use Stream Elements or Streamlabs. You can literally just use Streamer.bot to make it so that when someone follows, something happens like an animation a gif an alert can happen from streamer.bot triggering things in obs which is very cool you can test them here whether if, so, if there's a chat message you can make something happen maybe a noise you get very focused in the game and you want to make sure you don't miss any chat you can make it so that when someone chats you get a little audio cue um, just make sure it's not annoying for the stream maybe you set it up on a speaker that only you can hear First time someone chats, you can have something happen, message gets deleted, timeout, all this stuff. You can have things happen. You know, we've got cheer, sub, resub, gift sub, gift bomb, raid, host type train, community goals, stream update. All of this stuff, can you can have actions. It's very, very deep. You may never use this stuff, um, but it is here in case you want to. File watcher, this is so that you can have... Um, a file on your computer that is linked to streamer.bot that streamer.bot can manage and look at if a text file gets update you can have that 
trigger things. It, it's very, very deep and complicated. A lot of the stuff you don't have to use, so don't get too intimidated. It's nice that they exist. You may never use it. Timed actions. This is where you'd set up timers. So if you wanted to have every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, something happen. If it's a lower third graphic popping in on OBS, if it's a thing in the chat reminding you, drink some water, or thank you everybody for watching the stream if you're lurking or whatever, those kinds of messages, you could have them trigger on a timer. That's what timed actions is for. Credits, this is where you would set up the WebSocket server and you could choose how the file for the credits gets created and what it includes, whether it's follows, cheers, subs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Pyramids, um, we'll talk about this at some other time probably. Quotes, there's a quote system so that people can do commands to create quotes. Sub counter, this is pretty self-explanatory. So that's our general view. There's an about tab where you can learn about the actual creator of the program. You can find the Patreon link, the Twitter, the website, the Discord, the creator's Twitter, um, and the creator's Twitch channel. So if you want to support the creator of this bot and see the people who are supporting. So this is where you can check out that stuff. Let's start at the beginning again. You, you've opened streamer.bot and you're gonna see this big button at the bottom that says connect to Twitch. Let's click that. And what that's going to do is open a browser like this that will show you your Twitch account. If you're most likely already logged in to your Twitch account, which is nice. You know, if you've got your browser, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you are logged into Twitch. This will automatically open. Make sure it says your account here. If it doesn't say, click not you and log in. And then you're going to click authorize. And then go back and you should be able to see now viewers. You know, all the, all the random bots and things that lurk on your account when you're not live. Your stream elements bot, if you have that, and you. So now we've got that connected. We're going to hit save settings and viewers. We're going to go to the settings tab. We're going to go to Twitch accounts. And you're going to see here your broadcaster account is already connected. You're going to click auto connect. And you're going to click auto reconnect. If you want to have a bot account, a separate account, Twitch account, that is for your bot account, this is where I have a little trick for you so that you don't have to log out. So what's going to happen is you're going to hit connect to Twitch, and again, it's going to show up with your account, which is not what you want, right? Your tendency here is to want to click this, not you, log out, but that's going to log you out of Twitch. And then you're going to need to log back in as you after you log in as your bot account that's a nightmare you don't want to have to do that so i'm going to tell you a little tip here click the little triple dot menu open a new incognito window go back to this tab that opened copy the link up here in the url make sure you got the whole url so triple click on it go back to your incognito window and paste the url in hit enter you will then get this login. So I'm going to log in as my bot. Think outside the bot. You should now see your bot account saying here, authorize. It might look like it's frozen like that. And then your bot name will show up under the username here. Click use bot account for messages if that's what you want to do. Click auto connect. And now you didn't have to log out of your normal browser in order to do this. The other way to do this, and I recommend everybody do this anyway, is to create another Chrome profile or Firefox or whatever browser that you're using that you can switch over to that, ha that has your b bot logged in. So you can switch directly over to that browser. And if you're logged in on your bot on that browser, you can just paste the link into that browser and go from there. Same concept applies. As long as you're logged in and you have that URL, you can use it on a different browser and not have to log out. You could just hit cancel on this or close this tab and close the other tab that we had before. So now that we've got our broadcaster account and bot account set up, we're going to hit save settings and viewers. Next thing we want to do is set up our connection to OBS so that the actions that we set up work appropriately. So we're going to go to OBS, we're going to right click, hit add, and we're going to call this OBS gaming system. The reason I'm going to call it gaming system is because this could be used on a stream computer as well. You can have OBS on multiple computers and you can have them all kind of work in work together 
to do things on OBS on one and OBS on the other. I do this. I run OBS on my gaming system and on a stream computer, and I have hotkeys that will change scenes between the two of them, which then get fed to my capture card on my stream computer so that you can see stuff that I want you to see and do all kinds of crazy effects between the two computers. It's a very complicated setup, but it does work. The next thing we have to do is get your local IP address. Now, this is not something that you need to be worried about other people seeing. Go to your system tray and look for the network icon here and right click on it and say open network and internet settings. That will open this network status window. We're gonna click properties under the network icon. You're gonna scroll down on this window and you're gonna look for your IPv4 address. You're gonna highlight this, you're gonna right click and hit copy or you can do control C. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna put this right here under the host IP address. You do the exact same thing on your stream computer's OBS. If you're using a separate computer to stream, you need the IP address of the stream computer. Just right click on the network, right click on the network icon, go to properties, get copy the IP address and make sure your port is the same in the WebSocket server that we set up. The default's 444, so if you didn't touch it, you're good. And the password is going to be that really simple password we set up earlier. One, two, three, four is what I got. Auto connect on startup is fine. Reconnect on disconnect is fine. 30 seconds is fine. We're gonna hit okay. So you're gonna see at first, it's gonna say disconnected. So we're gonna right click on this and we're gonna say connect. And it should, if you got your password right and you got the IP address right, correct, you're going to see connected. And over on this side, you're gonna see the version of OBS you're running and the version of the plugin you're running. You're going to see the current scene that you're on. If there are any groups in that scene collection, you're going to be able to look at your stream status, whether it's recording or streaming, all of your sources. All of this stuff should show up, no problem. The events, um, we can worry about this uh, another day. So now that you've got OBS connected, so now that we've got OBS connected over here, um, and we've got the Twitch is connected in the settings, this Twitch one is to control the polls and predictions. Um, so we're gonna go over to actions. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna first just set up a very basic action, right? I'm gonna click add under action. So everything in streamer.bot is basically right click and add functionality. So we're gonna go under actions and we're gonna right click and say add. And this is just to call, to create a generalized idea. The an action is what do you want to have happen? It's a container for all the things that are gonna happen. It's, it's a series of things that you could have happen as one event, right? So we're gonna call this chat timer. Uh, thanks, thanks for be, being here. And we're gonna put it in a group. If you've already got groups, they're gonna show up in this dropdown. If you don't, you can create a new group just by typing it. So we're gonna call this chat timers. And the default queue is fine. Random action, we can do that if we wanna have you know random things play from the series of sub actions we're going to place into this container. Or you can have it say whether or not you want it to be concurrent, always run. For the most part, you don't have to worry about this stuff right now. We're just gonna hit okay. And you're gonna see here, we've got a chat timer and it's under this group chat timers. So now we need to go to sub actions and set up what this action actually does. So we're gonna right click, we're gonna say add action and we're gonna scroll down to Twitch. And under Twitch, we're gonna go over into the subcategory for all the things that we can do in Twitch. And we're gonna say, send message to channel. We're gonna say, preferred account. We'll have the broadcaster say it this time, instead of the bot. And we'll say, hey, thanks for being here. I appreciate, I appreciate you. Don't forget to follow if you haven't and don't want to miss the next miss future streams. There. That's a good message. We're going to hit okay. 
So now we've got this message that can be played, that can go out to the chat. Now, if we wanted to have another message or other things happen, maybe you also want to have a graphic on the stream that gets played out at the same time as this. Maybe some kind of GIF shows up on stream. You can right click, say add action, and we would go to OBS and we would set a visibility uh, state on a, on a source. Um, if it's in a scene and you're using scene embedding, this is where you would, could add extra things and you could put a delay in between. You can make it do a keyboard press. You can have it do whatever you want. This is all the stuff that can happen. And there's a lot to go over in here. Really what, what you need to do is just look for the thing. Don't have to memorize or learn any of this stuff. Just know that all the stuff that we can fetch and grab and do is in this list. We can also duplicate and copy things. If we right click on this, we can say duplicate action. Now we've got two messages and maybe we want to put a love, uh, some little hearts at the end of this one. So it's just a little bit different. And maybe we're going to say another action and then we'll go in here and say, no, really, I love you. Easy. Change the action, change, change it. Now we've got three messages. They're all a little bit of a variety. And we can go back in here and let's say random action. We'll check that. And now a random action from these three will always get played. But we have to set it up to happen. So how do we want this message to come across? Well, first we want to test it. So what I recommend you do is set up a hotkey for testing. So we're going to go to the hotkeys tab. We're going to right click and hit add. And we're going to choose a key, right? So let's do one. We'll do control shift one and we're going to say this action, right? So you have to choose the action that you want the hot key control shift one to go to, and you can set up a group here. So we're going to call this testing keys, and then you can hook up the action to whatever actions that you create in the action tab. So we've got this chat timer action that we set up and I've hooked it up to a hotkey now instead of a chat timer just so that we can test. So let's grab our chat and bring it over here and we're going to test out our hotkey. So we're going to hit control shift one and there it is. We've got our message in the chat control shift one and you can see it pulls a random message from the list. Control shift one, control shift one. It's there's only three at a time. So it's really random. One, you got one in third chance. You're going to get the same one over and over again. So it's a pretty high chance. Um, you're going to see the same one unless you do a whole bunch of them. So we know it works. We know the action works. So we're going to disable this. I don't need it. I can use that for future testing. So it's a different actions. It's a great way to test whether or not your entire action is working the way you want. We know it works. So we're going to click settings. We're going to go to timed actions. Again, we're going to right click, click add, and we're going to call this chat timer. Thank you. All right. And we're going to set the interval to be every 9,000 seconds. And we want to see at least 20 chat lines in between them happening. So even if the interval isn't met, if, even if the interval, even if the interval is met, we're still going to see 20 need 20 lines. Even if the interval is met, we're still going to need 20 lines in order to see the action. We're going to choose the chat timer, hit select, hit OK, and off we go. Now your chat every 9,000 seconds is going to send a random chat message into the chat and it, you go from there. You can also right click on it and disable it if you don't want it to happen for a stream. If you've got something set up that you only want set up for this stream, then you can disable or en enable it here. You can set the action, you can edit it, you can delete it, all good stuff. This is the basics of how all this works. If you want a chat command to do stuff, you click add and you go into the chat commands and you type the word that you want to trigger. So if we want the emo kappa to trigger, you'd say whether it's the start of the message, exactly certain 
in the message, if you want an exact phrasing, so you had a whole sentence to trigger something, or anywhere in the message, if anyone ever uses the kappa, we'll say anywhere. You could put it in a group, same thing. Set the action, chat timer, okay? Global cooldown, you can create an action that would maybe have something happen. You could set up a message to say, hey, this is on cooldown, and then you connect that message action up to the cooldown here. You can set the global cooldown in seconds, you know, one second, zero seconds. You can have it do it per user cooldown so that a single user can't do it every three minutes, but other users can still trigger it happening every 10 seconds, something like that. You can set the permissions to allow or deny for certain groups. Um, and you can say set permissions per user. So if there's a, a user that the bot is aware of, and you can move them over to your chat over here. Um, or you can move a user, a specific user, to trigger whether or not that one user is allowed to do this command. This is how you would set up maybe special commands for people to do actions, maybe time people out or ban people with, with the bot, um, or give people special permission because maybe they gave you a big tip and you want to give them access to a specific command. Um, this is where you would be able to expand that kind of functionality and you can give people, you can, this is where you would also set up a group, a specialized group. You could put people, users into those groups, um, or you can go specific user if you want. This is also good that if you want to have streamer.bot react to the things that stream elements bot is doing. So if stream, you want streamer.bot to display something on the stream whenever stream elements has a timed action or says something in the chat. You can have that trigger. You can have just stream elements when stream elements uses a specific word. So for instance, if you want streamer.bot um, to react to any time stream elements says, hey, I have merch, check out my merch here. You can literally make it so that any time streamer.bot uses the word merch, a graphic pops up through OBS. It triggers a scene or some kind of thing in OBS to happen through the actions. Pretty cool. So if you want to allow only specific users, you'd click the little arrows over here and transfer the user to the other side. Um, and you'd want to include yourself in that. So if I use the word Kappa in my chat, um, and I, it should trigger that reaction. So if we were use the word Kappa now in the chat, you can see that it also displayed the the action that we set up, which sent the channel message, a random channel message. So this is the basics on how to use streamer.bot. If you guys have any questions about how this works, please leave a comment below. Future videos are going to include more intricate setups between how to control things like lower thirds, graphics, alerts, all of that kind of stuff. We're going to set up connections to stream elements. We're going to be going much deeper in separate videos. I just wanted to kind of make a general overview on how streamer.bot works. So those of you who want to get going and get things working through streamer.bot, go ahead and use this video. Hope you found it helpful. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe for more content. Oh, and um, if you guys are using another bot, don't be afraid of using both bots at the same time. You don't have to move everything all at once from one bot to, an, to another. You, don't, you can just start moving things piecemeal. You know, don't try to do everything all at once. Just use both bots at the same time. Run your old bot and the new bot and move one command at a time. Take your time it's transitioning everything. You don't have to do it all at once. Streamer.bot, you can use both bots for the rest of your life if you want. You can use all the things all at the same time. Um, I do like, I do suggest that you eventually try to move everything over to Streamer.bot so that you don't have to run as many programs and keep track as much as much stuff. But you could just continue to use your old bot for what you're using it for and set up Streamer.bot for new cool things as well. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you guys in the next one.